get in more on the business side of things. Yeah. So yeah. what part of the epiphany did that, you know, how did that take place? You know, I always wanted to have my own label. You know what I'm saying? And it's deep. Like, again, like you said, people saying, you're ahead of your time. I'll never forget this. Going back into the annals of Nice and Smooth, that Nice and Smooth history. So, okay, first of all, for people that don't know, you know, I came into the music industry writing for Bobby Brown. Mm -hmm. All right, fine. So when I used to travel with Bobby, I would hear all of these stories. And I was just like a sponge. I was soaking it in, soaking it in. So when I came into the music industry, I was like, yo, man, I want to I have my own label, man. And, you know, so I said, what is it? What, you have to have a distributor? You know, I'm asking questions, you know. Sometimes I get the answers, and sometimes I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Depending <laughs> upon who I was at, ask it. Right? right, right. So initially, we were these kids. We made skill trade, dope on the rope and all that, but we were trying to get a distribution deal. So everybody was like, y'all are what? Get up, get out of here. Anybody get no damn distribution deal. Now, we get record deal. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so I would talk to my Uncle Linwood, right? And I would tell him, I was like, yo, Unc, man, you know, one day I want to have my own record company, man. I want to have my own label, man, you know? And uh, he, he'd say, yeah. He said, that's a good thing. He said, but you know what? Take advantage of the opportunities you have now. He said, you know, you're actually, I, right, you're part of a company. I right, fine. He said, for the most part, they give you, you know, your creative freedoms, you know, more or less. I was like, yeah, I said, but every time we create something, you know, they're trying to shoot the shit down because they don't understand what the fuck we're creating, man. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, just rock with me, man. I mean, come on. So he's like, okay. He said, but you know what? He said, here's the good thing. He said, learn, watch and pay attention to how they run their company. You know, get paid to learn. Yeah, get paid to learn. So I was like, yeah. He said, you know, don't get this. It's, you know, I know it's frustrating. He said, but try not to get as frustrated. Just learn from them how not to treat people. Hmm. And I was like, oh, shit. Um, I was right. You know what I'm saying? So time went on and I was just like, and then they always been in the back of my mind. And I was like, but I, I always wanted to be in a position where I could help more than harm. You know what I'm saying? I was like, and, and the industry was just changing so much, so especially in the 90s. I would meet all these different young, talented kids, but they really didn't have a clue, like, really. So I was trying to school them, and they would be looking at me like, what are you talking about, Smoke? I was like, no, it's not really like that. Mm -hmm. All right, let me, all right, no, it goes like this. I said, no. And I would try to tell people, you know, I'm, I'm trying to tell these little cats before they get in the game that, like, I'm trying to teach them about recoupable funds and, Oh no, they take that shit back, homie. That's like it's a, a loan. Right, it's a loan. And 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 they would be looking at me, you know, like uh that only happens to you. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah, I, you know, but of course years later they'll you're right, smooth, you know, whatever. But um so now it was only fitting. Then the whole industry changed. Mm -hmm. And actually everything came back to the hands of the artist. You know, but a lot of people they just, I don't know, maybe, maybe people don't want to research how it's done. You know, I like to learn, man. So I'm like, all right. So I took my time these last few years. I was like, okay, so how does that go? All right. You blog? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I just want to learn this shit. And then I said, I have to surround myself with people that know more about this shit than I do. You know what I'm saying? So when I get to a certain point, I just give me the basics. And then just let me get back in the lab. Because that's where I'm most comfortable. I do me. And I come back and I go, all right, let's rock it like this. And, and so that's where we at. And, um. You know, once once Barnes Entertainment is really, really up and smashing, come on, man. I'm an artist. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not... People that know me, man, know that I've never been greedy. I'm not that type, dog. And I'm going to school you on how the shit goes so you ain't coming back to me messing with me later. I'm like, look, this is how the shit go. ba 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 boop 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 and boom 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 You ready? You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Sheesh. You know, but it's funny because now... Uh, you know, people have to work. They have to invest in themselves. You know, before anybody would take it to, you know. So nowadays, basically, anybody that I would be bringing on probably would have their own things in the can already. Like, yo, I already did my video. I got so much of my likes. You know, shit like that. So I'm like, okay, okay. well, come on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then what's uh, beyond what your uncle had told you? How, like, you've been on... You know, two iconic labels in particular mm -hmm. of the three main ones you've been on with Sleeping Bag, Fresh, and then Def Jam. Mm -hmm. Like, which, at each stage of those parts of your career, what did you really learn from one to the other to apply now? Um, basically, from Sleeping Bag, um, Sleeping Bag really just didn't 
I mean, I'm gonna keep it a hundred. You know, I can curse on your show, right? Yeah. Okay. Sleeping bag didn't give a fuck. Man. You know what I'm saying? They just didn't care, man. Like I would look at these guys, just be like, you know, and and you gotta understand. I think from running now, imagine that dynamic. I'm running around with Bobby Brown. I'm hanging around New Edition. Right. I'm going to occasional meetings at MCA Records. So I'm seeing things companies run. Right. And then I later signed with Sleeping Bag Records. And, you know, that door basically opened more or less through Greg Nice because he was doing beatbox with Tila Rob right. and so forth and so on. So when we finally made our demo or whatever, he was riding around with them going to a show with Tila Rock and he happened to play one of our songs. And, and they were like, he's come over with us. Why are you guys going to, you know, because they had never heard him rap before. You know, mm -hmm. I put the battery in Greg back because Greg didn't want to rap at that time. I was like, come on, man, you want to rap? One thing led to another. So they're hearing him rap and they're hearing me. And who's this guy? You know? So they're like, well, come on through. We'll give you a single deal, you know. And then the single deal ended up being an album deal. But I'll never forget, man. I keep it 100%. I'll keep it honest with you. The first day I walked up in sleeping bag with Greg, I smelled weed. Now, we not talk about now. Shit legal. Right. I'm talking about in 88. Right. Late 87. We walked up in sleeping bag at all. And they wasn't Rasta. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, what the fuck? So I smell the weed. I'm like, okay, what the fuck is going on? So and I see all these boxes and shit. And I come through and I see Jess Ice. He was the first artist that I saw, you know, that was a part of the label. And uh, he just like, yo, what's up, Greg? And he was like, yo, this is my man's moon. I'm, I'm meeting him. And I give, you know, just a pound. But as time went on, I see just... You know, it's different time. Just coming in there, wilding for his money. Where the fuck is my money? And he's turning tables and shit over. I'm sitting there like, who the fuck have I got myself in? This is, I, you know, because I had those episodes. I grew up around all of that. I know the streets and all of that by this time. And I just want to make music, dude. So I'm like, I didn't know how synonymous the streets and the game were. I didn't know back then. I just was like, oh, man, shit, you make some music. You ain't got to look over your shoulders. You ain't ducking no cops, you know. This is a beautiful thing. I'm sitting there man, seeing some of the antics of some of these other artists and what they're going through not to realize that I was going to have to go through the same shit and then, and then they were going to file bankruptcy and, right. and leave us, you know, in debt, you know, and owing us half a million dollars and all that crazy shit. So, welcome to the music industry at that time, you know. <laughs> and so, <laughs> but here's how God works. The One of the only... Um, Stipulations in the contract that they agreed to was a bankruptcy clause. <laughs> Go figure. Right. So, with the bankruptcy clause, it entitled us and enabled us to get full ownership of our publishing and our catalog. Wow. Ooh. That's Touché. a big thing. That's a big thing. Do you know what I'm saying? So, when we came into Def Jam, we came in with owning our publishing and everything. And in Def Jam, they didn't realize, they didn't know about the public. About the uh, clause, so they find out later, mm -hmm. of course. Like, wait, no, you own that shit. Yeah, well, matter, give it up. As a matter of fact, we do. Yeah, so it's like give it up. You know what I'm saying? We like give it. What a matter of language is that? <laughs> Where they talk that shit at? You know what I'm saying? Like, right. we just took a loss, bro. Like, it, anybody around here? Well, you know, we brought y'all out the contract. Shit, we entitled to the pub. Whoa, 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 guys. Let's just make a decent publishing deal, co-publishing deal, and we can work from here. Mm -hmm. Let's just give it a shit. It's not going to happen, pal. You know what I'm saying? How about you give me that half a million that they owe us? If that's the case, right. you paid them. So they got paid twice. Right. The they what, Double what, dipping. Come on. What part of the game is that? So it was that type of thing. So, you know, seeing all of that shit. And, and so from Def Jam now, now from Sleeping Bag to Def Jam now, there was a, two different worlds. Mm-hmm. You know, they, these motherfuckers are, are sleeping bad. I gotta touch on them one more time. This shit was so savage. They'd be like, you know, <laughs> like, let's say they even, let's say they said, uh, come to the, uh, come through next Tuesday and we'll have your advance for your album. Mm -hmm. We get there Tuesday. They got half of the advance and some weed. What kind of crackish bullshit is this? So I'm like, Oh, nah, where that bread at? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm different. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. And you know, G is younger than me. You know what I'm saying? So some of that, she be like, yo, we got a fucking ounce of weed. Man, fuck that weed. Hey, yo, 
what's up with my money, man? And they just be like, yo, what's your partner is being difficult. I'm like, you're not telling me when the fuck I'm going to get my paper. Right. I can't go and pay. And plus, you know, I was a young father. So I'm like, I can't pay with this fucking weed here, man. Are you shitting me? You know, and so we would we would go through it, you know. Hmm. Now, Def Jam, whole nother animal. So it was a structure. So when we signed the Def Jam, man, I was fucking excited, dude. I was like, yo, let's go. Yeah, we got a shot. They, you know, it, they're setting up. They have departments. Right. And they're like, they're setting up. Uh, appointments for us to do MTV. They're, you know what I mean? And, and, I, and I felt way more comfortable at Def Jam, you know. But then it was a little glitch creatively, but, you know, other than that, everything else was was cool. You know, I, I enjoyed the Def Jam experience. But weirdly enough, Greg didn't. <laughs> I don't know why he didn't like Def Jam. Like, I was like, wait a minute. You like the sleeping bag shit? <laughs> but you don't like Def Jam? We rolling, baby! Right. Yeah, we, we, we would go through it. Well, it's different. It's uh, as you are well aware, a lot of people's careers, it's a lot of happenstance and a lot of things. And you know, were you making better music on Def Jam than Fresh? Maybe, maybe not. But or Sleeping Bag Fresh? But maybe, maybe not. But you were getting on the radio more. You were getting right. this more. You were getting right. that more. Right. And that's a huge difference that a lot of people don't really, when they look at records, they don't understand everything around a record that has to work for it to be successful. Yes. They don't get that. No. And they never look at it that way, like, oh, this person should be bigger, this song is whack, or this is great. Or, right. But it's like there's so much beyond the man. song itself. So many components, man. Yeah. yeah. It, it's remarkable. And yes. that's why before it's so remarkable that hey. on your own, yeah. that you're you know, having the success and getting man. you know, six-figure views man. And, and blowing up. Man, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful thing, man. And, you know, I, dude, I mean, that's why I say to God be the glory, man. I cannot take, you know, full credit. I'm going to do my part. But it's beyond my, listen, dude. In the last two months, I went number one on three different charts, dude. Hmm. So I'm just like, well, touche, man. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to DRT. Uh, shout out to uh, Urban Influencer. And... Radio, wait, wait, wait. No, no, I hate this. Wait, radio, so it's Urban Influencer, Radio Perfect. Oh, shit, I'm fucking up. Well, well, the three, I love y'all. Well, there it is. Yeah. All right, Smooth B. Yes. Always a pleasure, sir. My brother, all the time, son. You know how we do. Thanks for coming through to Unique Access. As yes. always, Smooth B in the yes. building, man. Yes, Make sure man, you I love y'all, man. Listen to all of his music. It's Definitely. phenomenal. Yeah. And we'll get him come back later. Yeah, I'll be back. Yo, when I drop this album, I'm coming back, back to do the whole shit with you, man. Let's do it. All right? We All right, son. It. Much love, baby. We on it. We on it. Peace, y'all. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a fifty thousand dollar car. My whole angle always was. I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. There will be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV basketball? Yo MTV it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gang bang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. There's always gonna be shit happening in the street. You know what I mean? So it's always gonna be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.